this is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and are glad in this day, and we're glad that you're here with us in worship. We pray that you have been blessed with these online worship services at Mount Pisgah, and we know that you will be blessed today. Just a couple announcements to share with you. Two weeks from today, July 19th, uh, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. Even though we'll be doing this individually or with our families, we invite you to be prepared two weeks from today in our worship time together online uh, to be able to have bread and wine or grape juice available uh, to participate with us. We are also blessed today to dedicate, uh, and we'll be sending out, our youth will be sending out this Wednesday, over 200 dresses that were made by the women of the church. Uh, Pastor Kate will be doing a blessing here in just a little while as we send these out to three very special outreach ministries. Since it is a 4th of July weekend, we have a special prayer to share at this time as well. Let us pray. Lord, we stand today as our forefathers have stood before you in times gone by, celebrating our history and all the things that our country has achieved. On this day, we rejoice in the favor you have graciously given us. We thank you for the blessings of liberty for this generation and for generations to come. We thank you for our independence, peace, and for all those who have bravely given their lives in defense of freedom and justice. We thank you that your gracious and provident hand has given us so much. Yet as a nation and a people, Lord, we often have cho not chosen the right way. We ask you to forgive us for these times. On this day, we commit ourselves wholeheartedly to honoring and serving you. With everything that we are, we lay our lives before you. Make us a generous people, a holy nation, knowing that we are blessed to be a blessing. People set aside to share your love, to be a light to the peoples and nations of this world. Today we do not presume your grace for our country, but our land is in need of you. Our people are in need of you. Our industry and business is in need of you. May we look only to you this Independence Weekend, dependent on you. Please come now by your glorious Holy Spirit, breathe new life of peace and justice into this nation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we praise you through Christ our Lord. We thank you for the labor of the women in our own congregation to provide for those in need. May their work remind us of your work through our hands. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. You have made all things for your glory. Bless these dresses. May they serve as garments of love for your daughters at Baptist Children's Home, Living Waters Lutheran Church in Cherokee, North Carolina, and Safe Harbor. Grant that they may be a reflection of your grace and your mercy, and may their recipients find joy and peace in your presence always. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, come and worship. If you're tired and worn out, just lay down the things you're carrying. Listen to what Jesus wants to tell you. See if you can discover how Jesus wants to use you. For Jesus is humble and gentle, and he will give us everything we need to follow him. Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence day.
I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Well, then a little light from heaven healed my soul. Well, he bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Gonna tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our famous cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, you will know a little fire is burning. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. of Matthew, we read that Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love this verse. Well, I love it now. <laughs> I say now because for years, and by years I mean most of my life, I thought Jesus was talking about a shoulder yoke, the kind that people used to carry water and milk in, a hard piece of wood with a section carved out that you would put around your neck and it would lay across your shoulders and you'd hold your arms out and on each end you could carry a bucket. Talk about a heavy burden. It wasn't either easy or light. I lived that way. I suppose metaphorically I could say that in one bucket I'd carry all those things which we don't want to carry. Fear, disappointment, anger, heartache, regret, sin, exhaustion, depression, anxiety, illness. But in the other bucket, I'd lo load up all those things which Jesus asks us to do. Love your neighbor, repent, forgive your enemies, deny yourself, don't give in to temptation, put God first. You know, the good stuff. The very things God wants for us. So you might think, I'll bet that bucket was lighter. <laughs> Not hardly. It sure wasn't. Those things were just so hard. Those things are hard. Because it seems like every time I do one good thing, I failed at doing something else. Those things loaded me down just as much as the other bucket. But I'd keep trying. About all the while, the buckets just got heavier and heavier and heavier. My shoulders got blisters. My back hurt. And when the buckets were really full, my faith was about to break. And there were times I collapsed from the weight of it all. 
See, I just couldn't fit the way I felt and what I was experiencing with what Jesus said, that he is gentle and he will give us rest. I finally came to the conclusion that the only way to get that kind of rest was to continue trudging down along with my back stooped over. And when my time on this earth was over, that's when I get the rest. Because as hard as I tried, I couldn't put that yoke down. It felt more like a stockade than a yoke. And sometimes, really, when life was going really great, so things would splash out of the bucket and the, and the load would seem a little less burdensome. But then a crisis would hit, or a friend would betray me, or I didn't achieve something. And there go those buckets filling up again. So let me tell you why I like this verse. I love this verse now. One day, probably about, I don't know, some years ago, I visited a historical working farm. And you know what I saw? I saw two bulls in a dual yoke plowing the fields. <laughs> I, I literally laughed out loud. Oh, I think this is the kind of yoke Jesus is talking about. He wants to share my burden with me. I had it all wrong. Instead of carrying those two buckets all on my own, I could exchange my personal yoke for one which has room for Jesus. Simply put, I had a choice. I could continue to slog through life trying to carry not just my burdens and burdens of others as well, I could keep trying to live up to an impossible standard that God never intended in the first place. And I could keep trying to trudge along, trying to catch up with that Jesus who I could see off in the distance, the sweat so blurring my vision I couldn't even see him at all at times. Or I could ask for help. Specifically, I could ask Jesus to share my load. That little day on the historical farm changed my life. I finally understood that living a life of faith in the sufficiency of God rather than in self-sufficiency means that we allow God to walk beside us as well as off in the distance. As the song said, life's a hard road to tow but we don't have to do it alone. Now, of course, Jesus is always around us and within us, above and below and to the sides and in front and behind. But for now, let's just stick with this metaphor. Jesus offers respite for the weary. But what we may miss here is that Jesus is also highlighting the importance of instruction. Not only as a yoke equipment for an animal, this term was used to refer to the task of obedience to the Torah. In order to obey the law, we need to know the law. Jesus wants we who are burdened to learn from him in order to find rest, to find healing, to find wholeness and completion. Getting to know Jesus helps us know ourselves and others and life better. This is the beginning of wisdom. In a world where the truth is often presented as debatable and lies are painted as facts, we become weary. We need Jesus' guidance. The truth matters. The Gospel of Matthew is often referred to as the teacher's gospel. Throughout this gospel, Jesus is teaching. There's a big emphasis on his teaching ministry. In fact, he leaves the disciples with a directive to go into the world and teach all nations. But in order for them to teach others, they must first understand. 
and the teaching reveals who Jesus really is. Jesus' teaching facilitates truth, becoming wisdom. You see, wisdom clarifies our vision. When Jesus tells us that wisdom is vindicated by her deeds, he's lifting up an important aspect of his Jewish heritage, the wisdom tradition. It is wisdom which grants us the ability to understand beyond our sensory perceptions or our emotions. So how is wisdom evident? If wisdom is vindicated by her deeds, as Jesus said, what are her deeds? Proverbs tells us that wisdom provides order for chaos. And I, did I mention I had a lot of chaos in those buckets, and I think there's, there's some chaos in our world that could use some order right about now. And in the Psalms, we read, wisdom grants us humility and protects us and guards us. Wisdom is a life-giving gift that comes with the Lord's favor, and it rests deep within us, having moved from our intellect into our spirit. But wisdom seldom comes quickly. It takes time and experience and a good deal of self-reflection. <laughs> Perhaps that's exactly what kept me in my shoulder yoke for so long. All my energy was put into trying to do the right thing and to deal with life on my own, trying to win God's approval. See, God, see how hard I'm trying? I've got it all. I allowed no time for just being, to allow God's word to sink in, and most importantly, to change me. When we are yoked with Jesus, when our burden is lightened as he guides us, we will experience the rest for our souls God intends for us here on this earth, not in the next life. We have time for prayer, for listening to the words, and to sometimes walk silently together, enjoying God's presence right beside us. I don't know what you're carrying but I know everyone has something that weighs them down. Is it fear or anger? Is it not knowing what the future is holding, especially in these strange times? Is it a child in danger, an ill parent? Or is it the struggle of constantly trying to win the approval from others or from God? Remember, you are yoked with a living God who already approves of who you are. And he never wants you to carry your burden alone. Jesus said, Come to me all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We believe in the all-powerful God who created the world in love for us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God in the flesh and our Savior. God showed his love in giving us his only Son. Jesus poured out his love for us by going to the cross in our place. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can live eternally with God. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, our sins can be forgiven. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can live today as Easter people. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the power of God alive and at work in our world today. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can stand against all adversity and declare for the world to hear, Jesus Christ is risen and we are his people. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God of love, we are grateful that you have revealed yourself to us. 
each of us loved by you as children, each of us precious in your sight, each of us a reflection of you, each of us bound together by love, which is, in fact, your presence among us. We come to you, O God, weary and carrying heavy burdens, illness, loss and grief, caring for those who cannot care for themselves, unemployment or underemployment, hunger, homelessness, oppression, violence, anger, depression, addiction. From these and from so many other yokes, dear God, we pray for rest, for healing, for release, and wholeness. On this holiday weekend, we recognize that our nation also bears many burdens. We don't trust our leaders. We cannot find ways to work together for the common good. We allow the least among us to suffer. We lose our children to endless conflicts and wars. We fixate on what divides us rather than on what brings us together as one people. Remind us this weekend of our calling. Remind us of our common creed that all people are created equal. Inspire us to ensure that all of your children enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Help us be profoundly grateful for our freedom and security and to never take these gifts for granted and to use them for the betterment of all. God of all life, may peace and justice fill our land and indeed the whole world. Gracious God, grant us the yoke of Christ, binding us together, tethered by your love, guided by your presence, bringing your kingdom into this world. It is for this kingdom that we now pray, using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We hope that you've been blessed in joining with us in worship, and we hope that you have a very blessed week. Receive the benediction, the blessing of our Lord to each and every one of us. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us the peace that only he can give. Amen. Near my God to thee, nearer to
shall be 